My name is Hannah Ray Leach, and I am the director and writer of the play you are about to see, Bedroom Culture. Thank you so much for being here. I truly cannot express how happy I am to finally share with all of you my baby. So just a little bit of history on this play before we get into it. I was a dramatic writing major at NYU. The seeds of this play were first planted in my thesis play for my BFA final project. And originally, the two main characters of this play were just like little side characters in my thesis play. But the more I worked on it, I realized that I really wanted to be writing the story of this will they, won't they best friendship with unclear boundaries type of story. Once I finished that first draft, I submitted the play to Cleveland Public Theater's development program, and it was selected to be a part of the 2019 Entry Point Festival, where just a chunk of the first act was put on its feet and performed for an audience of probably like 60 people twice. After entry point, I resubmitted the script and Bedroom Culture was selected for Test Flight, which is their second tier of new play development, which means that CPT will co-produce with you a workshop production. And that was originally supposed to happen in April 2020. Obviously, that didn't happen. At that point, it became kind of unclear what was going to happen with the play at all. The following spring, Test Flight went virtual and we did a Zoom adaptation of the first act. The clouds cleared, if only for a moment, and it allowed us to do Bedroom Culture, the workshop production in Test Flight 2022. And that is what I am presenting to you today. Despite the odds, I was able to retain the entire original cast for this production, even from all the way back in 2018 when we had that open call for entry points. We also had an entirely new production team for this production. Lots of new people meeting. It was cute. This show was a huge labor of love for everyone involved. I don't know if I have ever put so much effort into a creative project in my life. From nightly rehearsals as a first-time theater director to hand encrusting a pink rotary phone as one of our most beloved props and even convincing the Cleveland Metro Parks to let us borrow a lifeguard chair entirely for free. I really feel like I have grown up a lot alongside this play and these actors and the whole world that this play is set in, it's all only gotten better with age. I am so proud to present this play with music by me and my friends, with performances by these actors that I have been so lucky to have now for multiple years, and with a story that really feels like my magnum opus in many ways, hopefully just of my teens and 20s, but you know, we'll see. Shout out to my beloved sister, Audrey Leach for filming this show. She obviously did a professional job and now you all get to sit in the comfort of your homes or wherever and enjoy it. Thank you for watching. For teenage girls in particular, the bedroom is a sacred place. A place where they can meet and gossip with their friends at sleepovers. A place where they can cry over boys. A place where they can spend endless hours on the internet. Bedroom culture is a theory that girls are socialized to not engage in crime and deviance through engaging in consumer products, products that might improve their appearance or provide entertainment to be enjoyed alone or with girlfriends. Traditionally at the center of this culture was girls' consumption of magazines and recorded music, but the content at the center of bedroom culture is ever evolving. Although the bedroom has changed for girls over time, it still acts as a place where growth into womanhood takes place. As a result, it has been argued that bedroom culture has become an explanation and conceptual tool with which to understand the specific ways in which girls organize their lives. Sometimes I can feel myself staring at her in this way that I know is totally not chill. <laughs> like, it just starts happening before I even realize I'm doing it. And suddenly she's like in soft focus and with shimmering tinsel in the background. And we're doing a photo shoot together at one of those ironic glamour shot places. <laughs> you see the girl over there? The one that's gazing? God. What a poor baby. This is her journal. 
and those are her thoughts. How little does she know of what's to come, of her future as a, a well-read, well-groomed, psychodynamically adjusted woman <laughs> in possession of a degree from a small liberal arts school <laughs> of the cats, <laughs> of the leather-bound notebooks, of her future really nice girlfriend with lots of very specific, very tiny hand tattoos, <laughs> of living with said girlfriend in a progressive city with a good public transportation system and, <laughs> and lots of good, cheap places to eat. See, the woman that you see before you today, me, is the woman that she, meaning little Mia, still gazing, hopes and prays to grow up to be. She can imagine she'll turn out like this, but she can't know anything for sure. But she fantasizes endlessly about this moment where she can sneak off during a family Christmas party, leaving her socially competent girlfriend alone with her family <laughs> to cozy up with an old journal, reveling in the fact that those painful teen years are now over and thinking to herself, thank God that didn't impact me that much. <laughs> right? <laughs> I just don't get why you won't at least try. I don't wanna. Okay, but like you've been playing that song for years. You wrote it in like eighth grade. Me sitting in my room singing a song is very different than me getting in front of a room full of people and doing it. You play it for me all the time. You're not people, you're you. <sighs> okay, but what's the worst that could happen? Uh, somebody can videotape me and turn me into a meme. I can't handle that level of exposure. I think it'd be cool. The song is a bop. It like. Reminds me of a Michelle Branch song. Yeah, it's probably because it's all that I listen to mm -hmm. and that Clyde song by Howie Day. <laughs> well, I hope you do it. You've been wanting to do that rinky-dink open mic night for years now. And I, for one, am tired of the waffling. Oh, I forgot to tell you. There's more pool drama. <gasps> no! I know it's your favorite drama genre. Yes. Tell me, tell me, tell me. So you know the kid with the uh, <clears throat> tiny sixth toe? And the swim shirts. Yes. Well, his mom came over to me the other day and was like, can I talk to you for a second, Mia? And I was like, yeah, sure, because what choice do I have? She whips off her sunglasses and is like, have you seen my son Grayson's super soaker? Which, side note, I never knew this kid's name was Grayson, so that was a fun surprise. No, and I think Grayson, I think he's like a YouTuber boy. Why do I think like that? I don't know, but I thought the same thing. That's a beard. Anyway, um, we get into this debate because I have not seen the Super Soaker, but she clearly doesn't believe me and thinks that a lifeguard took it or something. Well, did you? No. I wish I had. They're not allowed, but I did not confiscate it because I would rather die than have a one-on-one -on -one with Grayson or his mom. Even making eye contact with him is so uncomfortable. He's this, like, weird, desperate, Kid energy. <laughs> but anyway, it becomes this whole thing. And then she's like, I think we're taking this whole anti-gun thing a little too seriously. Ooh. Don't you? What else are little boys supposed to play with? Uh, they can read a book or smack each other around with pool noodles. God, if Ohio sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you staying in Ohio if you don't have to? Uh, you know you wouldn't want me to go any further. Yeah, and like money. They're practically paying me to bleed scarlet and gray. Anyway, right. that's my story. <sighs> Great, that was a shit story. <laughs> so, I was so bored at work the other day. It is so oppressive in there. And for why? No one even comes in the Dillard's anyway. Um, <laughs> except, oh my god, except, do you know the Segway Mall Cops? <laughs> The younger Segway mall cop brought me a Subway sandwich. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, he, so he like rolled through my department and was like, hey, do you want some food? And I was like, no. And then we started talking about how sad it was that the amazing walk closed. 
and I said, it's not that sad, I'm vegetarian. And the only thing I could eat there was like that weird suspicious veggie thing. Uh, is he even a real cop? TBH, I have no idea how these men are credentialed. <laughs> All I know is that we are equally bored and I am obviously the most exciting thing in that place. But the point is, he brought me a sandwich. I hope you didn't eat it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> You know that's how like some bad shit's gonna happen to you someday. <gasps> Via mall cop subway sandwich? <laughs> no. Okay, okay. Um, here's a question. Would you rather have an extended interaction with Segway Mall Cop or Super Soaker Grayson? Mm. In this hypothetical scenario, am I in a bathing suit? Yes. <laughs> oh, literally, I'd rather interact with Grayson. No, you would not. Uh, why are you asking me this? Because uh, it's fun. Oh, why do you think this is fun? What else do we have to work with? A uh, game or something. Whatever other kids do for fun in Wedgwood, Ohio. <sighs> you have never interacted with any boy, illicit substance, or even a Segway mall cop in your entire life. And yet, you are the one that is always complaining about how bored you are. I mean, yeah, no kidding. What do you want me to say here? Honestly, I'm just stirring the pot. Mm. <laughs> oh my god, and I forgot to tell you. There's apparently a new guy starting at the pool. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm surprised. They hired somebody totally new and they didn't hire me. What the fuck? They had to hire someone so late in the season because the guy who works Saturdays went off to park ranger training. And I wasn't their number one person on deck. They know you work at the mall now. I know, but imagine if we could work together too. Loki, I feel like that's why Pat didn't hire you in the first place. Oh, <laughs> fuck that! Why does this always happen to me? I don't know why you care. You just said it yourself. I have six weeks left only. Well, you should be excited. I am excited. I'm just, uh, I'm a little nervous. Well, you'll be fine. You can just FaceTime me whenever. So who did they hire? Um, unsure, but apparently he has a lake house. Ooh, is he cute? Yeah, he immediately called and requested off after he got scheduled for his first date because he was going to be at the said lake house. If he has access to a lake house, why would he apply to work at the pool? Beats me. Oh. <laughs> Did you add a new Gaga poster? <laughs> so what if I did? She's beautiful. Where did you get them? I ordered it off of Etsy. You have a problem. Ooh, I know it's bad. Oh, Sorry. What are you going to do with all this stuff when you go to school? Oh, what are your parents going to do with all the rubble? Oh, excuse me. I am not planning on worrying about that until I absolutely have to. And knowing my parents, that will probably be a long time from now. Well, are you going to bring any of it with you? I was just thinking of the essential pieces. Um, uh, the Adele, or obviously the Beyonce. Obviously. Oh. I want something from this wall when you go. Oh my gosh, stop. You know you will, and you know I'm going to miss you. Almost as much as I'm going to miss all the free diet cokes from your workplace. Shut up. Um, don't you have to be there in like 10 minutes? Yeah, yeah, I should. Uh, you better put on sunscreen this time, I swear to God. I will! I'm good! You stop harassing me? Never. Are you coming with me? Yeah, I'll meet you out there later. I got some stuff I gotta do. Alright, okay. I love you. I love you too. Hello there. this 
stuff is on the walls, right? Yeah. I mean, you literally know what it is, but what does it mean? This is what it means to be a teenage girl. All this stuff, this thick coating of paper and glue and glitter and scraps is the very stuff that makes us feel all warm and cozy and like we can be anything we want to be. And I hate to say it, girls and gays, <laughs> but all this beautiful stuff is going to be gone by the end of our time here together tonight. Aww. You're catching on real quick. <laughs> so I encourage you to take it all in while you can because this stuff won't last forever. I know that's what that little one there is trying to do. It's like the second I'm left alone with my own thoughts, I just get enveloped in the what ifs, the but ifs, the all too soft and warm blanket of my own imagination. Every time I look at my horoscope, which we all know is every day, <laughs> it's like I'm rolling a pair of cosmic dice, praying that there will be some sign, some source of clarity, and I have the screenshots to prove it. Even though I know it's silly and masochistic, I still wonder what it would be like if we could actually be together. <laughs> Maybe it wouldn't look that different from how things are now, but it would still feel good to know for sure that she wants the same thing as me. like an idiot. There are better ways to get attention. Besides, she's like light years out of your league. Obviously. Thanks, guys. Um. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I'm Max. I'm the... the one who was busy at his lake house. Right. Must have been nice. It was pretty nice. <laughs> so what's up? Oh, um, Pat told me to ask you to show me how to operate the cheese machine. Right now? I guess. Well, I can't leave my post this second. As you can see, they're all moments away from watery graves. Pat said it would be okay. There's no way Pat wants their blood on his hands. <laughs> well, do you want some Skittles? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm sorry I backseat drove that uh, disciplinary action. Whatever. <laughs> I'll stay in my lane from now on. Dope. <laughs> I just have a lot of experience dealing with stupid boys. My brother used to act just like that. He even threw up on our dog once. <clears throat> yeah. Um, he and his friend Igor used to drive around on Friday mornings before school because, you know, trash day, and they'd find stuff left out on people's tree lawns, stuff they thought looked fun to smash, and they'd load it all up in the back of my mom's SUV. They had this thing called uh, a war hammer. I don't know, but basically they'd been collecting this stuff for months and months, and then they threw this party where they decided to invite all their friends over to smash the stuff in their collection, and then they got wasted 
And my brother got so fucked up that he threw up on Velvet, our dog. <laughs> I told my mom I had an anxiety attack, though, so my brother wouldn't get in trouble. Your dog's name is Velvet? <laughs> yep. The walk took a lot longer than normal because the sidewalk on the side of the road where the Wendy's is was closed. I wish I could find the right words to describe the way she looked at him when she did, but really the only thing I can say is that I felt like I was dying. Hi. Hey. Hey. <clears throat> Lavender, yes. this is Max. He's new. Oh, Lake House. Why does everyone know about that? <laughs> um, it is so great to meet you. I'm Lavender. Do you work here too? You look really familiar to me. Oh, um, no. <laughs> no, no. I, um, I follow She's Mia, like, like, everywhere she goes. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, do you want a Frosty? Lev, you don't have to do that. No, it's totally fine. I have a Frosty, like, every day. You can oh, mine. Frosties make my tummy hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have mine, please? <clears throat> so, uh, no to the cheese machine? Kristen! Can you teach him how to use the cheese machine, please? I'm begging you. There you go. Go to her. Cool. Uh, I'll see you guys around. <laughs> Bye. Hi. <laughs> Okay, he seems super nice. <laughs> uh, I guess. What, did he say something dickish? <laughs> he just used the word tummy. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what you need to know. I think that's kind of sweet. Do you know if he's a girlfriend? I know virtually as much about him as you do. Well, could you try to find some intel for me? Uh, <laughs> do I have to? It would be nice. You're really about to go on a thirst quest for him, of all people. I wouldn't call it a thirst quest, but it's... <sighs> I have six weeks until I go into the interpersonal abyss that is college, and I feel like an utter sixth grader when it comes to anything romantic. Like, I still rely on canned advice from Seventeen magazine. Mm, have you ever noticed how they do, like, the exact same spread on Greek yogurt every and single And I feel day. like there's this anvil that is crushing me. Anytime I think about going to a college party, or a bar, or whatever. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just uh, worried about all the molten cheese that is probably being wasted in there. <laughs> Tragic. Um, so what's the problem with the word tummy? Huh? Are you telling me you don't confidently use the word tummy at least every couple days? <laughs> Real. But here's the thing. <laughs> he seems incredibly generic. <laughs> like, <laughs> it obviously seems like she likes him, and she maybe probably does, but here are my thoughts, okay? He's cute enough. But Lavender also classically gets bored with boys who don't bring anything to the table besides looks. <laughs> And on top of that, her golden rule is definitely that of keeping your friends close and your enemies closer. Like, she literally went to Florida with Victoria and her family in middle school, and she fucking hated her. <laughs> she might want intel on Max because he's going to be working with me in the role that she originally wanted so badly. Maybe she thinks that he'll start getting attention from me, which is laughable, but like, maybe plausible. So like, I'm sure it'll be fine, but it's still annoying. <laughs> oh my God. Lavender, come here. Yeah? Oh. Read this. I did fucking hate Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. <laughs> Are you coming back downstairs soon? Yes, yeah, I just, God, I get so sucked into these whenever we're over here. Well, I don't blame you. That's some pretty juicy stuff. <laughs> Who would have known that 
things would pan out this way. Well, I guess I always did, deep down. I'll see you downstairs in a bit, okay? Yes. Hey, Mia, uh, could, can I get your phone number really quick, just like for work stuff? Yeah, it's on the wall in the break room. Four four zero five one nine three eight two seven. Thanks. Welcome. Why don't you take mine down too, just so you have it? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. Okay. Um. <clears throat> okay. It's it's four four zero five six two one two. Four, six. Did you get it? Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Um, and your name? I'm sorry. Oh, it's... Lavender. It's Lavender. Right. Uh, <laughs> Lavender. Yeah. It's good to meet you two. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I didn't ask for yours. Oh, I get it. You know, work and stuff. Totally. <laughs> All right, well, um... <laughs> Bye! Wait a minute, I know where I recognize you from. Do you go to the open mic nights at the library? Yeah, I do. That's it. I, I used to be one of the reshelfers there. You know, I'd be one of the people pushing the uh, carts. Oh my god, that's so cool! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Anyway, uh, I don't work there anymore, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But um, maybe I'll see you at one of those at some point. above all the rest. A flawed woman, an enraging woman, but a woman whose work defines an era, defines a mindset, and whether Lavender knows it or not, she plays a role in this story. And to be more specific, so does one of her most iconic albums. Fearless, as an album, is a crucial relic of 2008, and anyone who tries to dismiss its contribution to culture is a sheep. <laughs> if you know a girl who was in high school from 2008 to 2015, I can guarantee you she's had more than a handful of the world's most earnest car jams to this album. Love Story, You Belong With Me. They will forever be cultural touchstones. And honestly, just look at her hair in that picture. <laughs> we love Fearless in the same way we love Chipotle. <laughs> Even though we know it's cliche to do so. We love Fearless in the same way we allow ourselves to carry Disney princess lunchboxes in high school, even though we know it's borderline weird to do that. <laughs> and we love Fearless in the same way we love taking warm showers and getting into clean sheets and putting up Christmas lights in July. We love it because it's nostalgic. We love it because it's easy. We love it because it makes us feel like we're kids again. When you're 15 and somebody tells you they love you, you're gonna believe them, damn it! Yeah! Fearless is all about speaking your mind and taking risks and throwing yourself at that boy you love and saying, do you not see what you're missing? Are you a fool? 2012 Taylor Swift, because remember, that's where Lavender is. 2012 Taylor Swift 100% plays at the open mic night. In fact, early career Taylor Swift plays a 30-minute set at the open mic night, especially 
when it seems like that boy she likes might like her best friend more than he likes her? Hmm? Can Lavender play a 30 minute set? No. <laughs> but is she going to do her best? You better believe it. I am making my case shamelessly for fearless. And may we all take a moment of silence as she is removed from the diva shrine. playing that same song for like four years and we've just never talked about what it's about. I've never asked and she's never told me. Like that's definitely because I'm avoiding finding out. But still, what if it's about me? I mean, I don't know who else it could possibly be about unless maybe there is just someone I don't know about. obsessed with a dude that make me wonder. <laughs> Can you believe how obsessed I was? Hello. Oh yeah, so obsessed. Were you even listening to me? Yeah, of course. Okay, then what was I saying? What are you testing me now? I'm sorry if I'm not hanging on every last word of your old journal. <laughs> Jesus, sorry. No. 
I'm sorry. I'll do better. I know you hate it when I'm not paying attention. <laughs> okay, well, when you put it like that, you make it sound weird. You know what I mean. They know what I mean. <laughs> do I annoy you when I bring you food to work? No, it's amazing. You know that it's amazing. Okay, if you think it's so amazing, then why don't you bring me food to work? Oh my god. I'm just saying that after the whole mall cop situation, you would maybe get the hint that it would be nice to also be brought food. Why wouldn't you just ask? I want to be needy. <laughs> you are needy. That's why this relationship works. Mm, I don't want to be annoying. <laughs> something to make it up to you. How's that? Okay, that's exciting. <laughs> cannot believe you would take food from a mall cop just to scare me. Uh, it worked, did it not? Another thing that I'd say is absolutely essential to pack for college, especially at Ohio State, is OSU spirit wear for game weekends. And I know, I know, it's basically a huge stereotype that everyone who goes to OSU gets like very drunk in a parking lot before each game and takes a lot of pictures. With while this is mostly true, of course, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. The great thing about OSU is that because it's so big, it's kind of impossible to not find your tribe, as they say. <laughs> anyway, I suggest you go get some OSU clothes before you come to campus, just because they're really expensive in the bookstore. But if you want to get creative, I highly recommend that you go to a Cleveland or Columbus or even Cincinnati area thrift store, and I guarantee you, you'll find something really interesting and unique. <clears throat> Hey ladies, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Michelle. <laughs> if you're new here, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> this video, whew, this one is a doozy. If this is the first video of mine that you're seeing, um, you better buckle up. <laughs> Clearly you were determined with those search terms. <laughs> And I'm just gonna be honest with you, if you get queasy easily, this might not be the video for you because in this video, I am going to be reviewing in graphic detail all 12 different types of birth control. <laughs> yes, bitch, I have tried all 12 and we are just gonna get into it. Before I get too far, this video was ever so generously sponsored. <laughs> out there in the world for a girl to consume. Yeah, yeah correct? Yeah. Advertisements, Facetune, sponsored content, toxic bitches, the government, the environment, the police, no one doing anything about any of these things, having your brain regulated by birth control and everyone saying that it's fine. Sometimes you just want to escape. Sometimes you just want to really talk about all of this shit, but sometimes it feels like there's no one there. Like there's no one in the world who won't judge you or make you feel small. Even I feel that way sometimes. I know, it's really hard to believe. <laughs> when I feel that way though, 
there is someone I can call. Someone I have known and loved for years. Sure, we don't see each other much anymore, at least in real life, but I know that she'll always have my back. <laughs> this is Mia. It's me, bitch. <gasps> believe the day I am having. Why is it so loud where you are? Are you waiting for the train and the big bustling metropolis in which you live? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am waiting to take an express free train uptown to my beautiful minimalistic loft apartment that I share with my kind and chiseled husband. <laughs> well, whatever could be going wrong with your day then? Okay. I told you about this big expose that I've been working on about how the mayor is receiving kickbacks from Liza Minnelli. <laughs> <laughs> Why, of course. Okay. Well, if you can believe it, when they came in to take the new headshot for the digital version of the piece, they brought in a cool toned light. <gasps> a cool toned light. Who, who are these people your people arranged for? Clearly, they're idiots. <laughs> that reminds me of when I was doing the photo shoot for my latest album. They wanted me to wear a lampshade on my head. A lampshade. Like, could I have made it work? Uh, yes. But would I? Uh, no. No? <laughs> anyway, that's not why I called. Yes, yes, yes. Tell me what's on your mind. I was just thinking about the world. But how loud and screaming it all is when you really think about it. Do you find yourself existentially dependent on the perfect perfume scent and just the right amount of boring men texting you desperately on a daily basis? <laughs> oh, oh, my train is here. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, ooh, it's packed. Okay, I will call you later because we have much more to dish about this whole photo shoot sitch. And also, we can unpack the idiosyncrasies of and interactions between boredom and power, seeing as how we're each mistresses of both. <laughs> Beautiful. I'll be awaiting your call. Sometimes, Sadly for us, we can't talk to our best friends about the things that we want to. Sometimes it's a scheduling issue, but in little Lavender's case here, it's because no one really gets it. No one, not even her best friend, truly understands what it's like to have a full-blown music video going on inside her head at all times. It's nighttime. We're in the 40s. No, we're in the 60s. Maybe the 70s? It's all those eras. There's cigarettes. There's swirling smoke. There's Chanel lipstick. There are rich old men that want to make out with you. <laughs> there are biker men that want to make out with you. You're a drifter, but your eyeliner? is flawless. <laughs> You're free. The only thing you need is human connection and beauty and America and the cool pond of your heart. You're anachronistic pop star Lana Del Rey. You're the type of pop star that makes us make bad decisions. <laughs> you make us believe that sugar daddies are real and accessible. <laughs> You make us consider getting a motorcycle. <laughs> All of your peaches are ruined, bitch. <laughs> and you tell Max that. All my peaches are ruined, bitch. <laughs> you know how important it is that you not finish this summer a virgin. A virgin? <laughs> You don't want to have to wade into the waters of college fully unprepared and fully unaware of what you're doing, just asking to have your heart broken by someone who wears beanies indoors? No, 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 no. Lana would never. Well, she might, but he'd at least have a warrant out for his arrest. Anyway, you're not afraid of some 17-year-old boy? You're not afraid of his 
rejection or his feelings or his preferences, you could get into much deeper trouble if you really wanted to. You could show up in his driveway sucking on a lollipop and he'd be happy to see you. What could he possibly want that you don't have? You have the cool girl hair, you have the brains, all you need to do is lean into that confidence. You could show up in his driveway with that lollipop, but the least you could do is text him right now. It's in your hands. Hey, it's Lavender from the pool. Uh, why don't you come to the perfume counter at Dillard's tomorrow at two? You'll see why when you get there. why we say I love you to each other every single time we split up and every single night before bed. Like, of course we do love each other in all the ways best friends do, but it just feels more complicated than that. Especially when I fire off that I love you text and flip my phone over before I can see her response. Especially when I wake up in the morning and I'm so dependent on seeing her text first thing, mirroring that same sentiment. Why am I like this? Before she leaves, I'm going to tell her. Not because I expect anything good to come out of it. Not because I expect her to say it back, really, or do anything about it, but what will happen if I never say anything? There has to be the tiniest sliver of a chance that something good could happen, even if it's just a healthy acknowledgement. I guess what I'm saying is that before she goes, I'm going to tell her for the stunt, if nothing else. If she's going to get all brave on me and start doing all the things that she's wanted to do but hasn't, maybe that's a sign that I should do the same. time. Oh, I know. I will go save my best friend from an untimely death via poisoning. <laughs> uh, you really think Mall Cop would do that? Uh, catch you your beloved veggie delight. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're acting weird. No, I'm not. <laughs> Yes, you are. I'm, I'm doing what you want me to do. I am joyously delivering unto you Subway, untouched by the police. <laughs> I know, and um, thank you. So why are you acting weird? Nothing, it's nothing. You're standing there like at attention. That's not normal. Can you just drop it, please? Yeah, sorry. You nervous about the open mic night this weekend? Uh, yeah, I guess I haven't really been thinking about it. You still thinking you're gonna do it? Yeah, I think so. Oh my god, I'm so excited! <laughs> okay, why are you checking the time so much? Uh, okay, so my boss is gonna be here at 2, 
and she's going to be pissed if I have friends here, and she's coming to see how I arranged all the new bottles. <laughs> so, um, after last time, I just really can't fuck this up, okay? So, first of all, you hate this job, so why would you care? And second of all, why wouldn't you just tell me that in the first place? I didn't want to be rude. Well, you're being rude now. I know, and I'm sorry. I, I need you to leave. Thank you for the sandwich. You're welcome. Um, do, you, do you need a ride later? I will hit you up after this meeting, okay? I promise. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, I just want to ask you one thing. Um, what are you doing on your last night in town? I don't know. Why? Well, I just want to, like, book you, if at all possible. just want to make sure that we'll be, like, together doing something fun. This is me trying to make it up to you. Uh, yes, sure, definitely. Um, I will talk about it later, though, okay? I, I promise I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. All right, okay. Okay. Like, I get her the sandwich as she asks, and then she acts like I'm showing up with a full parade? <laughs> but, like, blaringly loud and disturbing in the middle of Dillard's. I don't know what she's hiding, but I know that it has to be something at least somewhat juicy because she never acts this way with me. Maybe she's going to meet up with a guy from Tumblr or something. Do guys even go on Tumblr? <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe a girl. Oh my god, imagine. I'd actually be surprised if she doesn't do anything insane soon before leaving. Oh my god, I bet she will. Fuck. Hey babe, it's me. Um, I know you're at the organic fair trade farmer's market right now. Um, <laughs> picking up some leeks. <laughs> but I just wanted to call and, and tell you that I love you and that only you know how to pick out the right kind of leek. And, uh, and that's not even the main reason why I love you. So um, I'll, I'll tell you more when you get home, but I uh, thank you for all that you do for me and for us. And I'm so grateful that I get to call you my girlfriend. I realized upon coming in here, I don't think I've been in the mall in like years. Like, I used to come here all the time with my mom to go to Journeys, but oh, yeah. damn, this place is really. Oh, gone downhill, I know. Like, I remember going crazy over the chicken at the Amazing Walk. Oh, same. Well, before I was vegetarian, um, I used to eat there as much as humanly possible. <laughs> well, as much as my mom. Well, not me, but if I could, Ooh. I would have eaten it as much as humanly possible. <laughs> you probably would have died. <laughs> yeah. Um, then I guess it's a good thing that I didn't. <laughs> so what's up? <clears throat> um, be confident. I just wanted to say that I, I think that you... You're... Confident. Um, just wanted to say that I think you're really cool, and I wanted to talk to you more. Oh. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, um, I don't have a lot of friends, and um, you just seem very nice. No offense, but I don't believe that you don't have a ton of friends. You're oh. so outgoing and so colorful. Like, how is that even possible? And Mia's your best friend, and she's mm. pretty cool, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, do you, do you talk to her a lot at work? Um, kind of. As much as she lets me. I'm, I was really surprised when you texted me, because I, I can't imagine that she says many good things about me. Oh, she doesn't say anything about you. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Well, I guess that's better than bad things. Yeah, but I wouldn't take it personal, because she's kind of a hater by nature. <laughs> oh, really? 
Yeah, like she would literally rather skin herself alive than talk to boys. Um, I don't know why though, because <laughs> you know how being like s slutty is like in right now? <laughs> like, um, ironically, hooking up with somebody, you're like eight times smarter than and like seducing people's dads. <laughs> um, she's just not into any of that. I mean, not that I am. Well, I, I am, but... Not in, not in like, not in like a slutty way, but like, well, um, not, not in a bad way, but... What even does that really mean? <laughs> um, anyway, M Mia, oh, okay, Mia didn't even wear heels to homecoming. <laughs> she just like cannot be bothered with that kind of thing. The most amount of makeup I can get her to wear is like the most minimalistic amount of highlight. I mean, it's uh, just not like, she's just not really into all that kind of stuff. She's just not like you. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. You're like the dark one. <gasps> you know? <laughs> You know how there's a character in a thing, normally a, a fantasy thing, and there's like the, the normal slash bright version of a character, and then the, the spooky bad one? Are you saying you're more like the spooky bad one? I guess. <laughs> That's not very feminist of me. Oh. Yeah, whatever, though. <laughs> so you just texted me to hang out, basically? Yeah. That's really cool of you. I'd be way too nervous to do that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I mean, hitting people up makes me super nervous. I was freaked out even coming here today. So was I. What does it say about our generation that in-person interactions are so terrifying? Oh, uh, I don't know. How about that we're like, fucked? <laughs> True. <clears throat> well, uh, when you get off work normally? I'm seven-ish. Well, do you want to hang out later this week? We could play Smash or something. What about Saturday? Oh my god. Um, uh, oh, um, yeah, I would um, normally, but that open mic night is on Saturday, and I was thinking I was going to perform a one for once. Um, I don't know. I, I've been practicing and stuff, so um, I think I'm gonna do it. Um, you should come. I will be there. We can okay. table the smash till a later date. Maybe <laughs> next week. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> I, thanks for uh, being brave. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you later. Self-expression. And then 
women when we've given up on branding ourselves for public consumption and have decided that we're ready to sink down into normal, boring life. We'll hold our babies in our arms when they aren't with the nannies, of course, and look down at them knowing that deep within they possess the same power that we did. And someday, if we've done our jobs right, they'll grow up to be the hottest girls in their town. <laughs> where we will provide healthy snacks and strict rules about devices. And to think, it all started with one boy! because it seems like you really, really hate me. And trust me, I normally never bring things like this up, but <clears throat> I'm really trying to better myself, or I guess I'm always trying to, but I just get these real intense hate vibes from you, <laughs> and I just wanted to say I'm sorry for whatever it is. I still think you're cool. Uh, I... Hmm. Do I hate you? No. Oh, good. I was worried. Like, why would you care if I did? Like, we're not friends. You don't know me. I'm just some random person you work with. Well, being hated isn't good in any capacity. Right. Um, but why are you saying something about it? I don't know. I read this book that told me I might have an avoidant attachment style. <laughs> Which is when you... I know all about that. Really? Yeah, my parents would leave me alone for like days at a time since I was seven. Oh my god, me too. Did you read that book, uh, Attached? Attached? Yeah. Our health insurance does not cover therapy right now, so off to the library I went. Yeah, I just don't want to have to ask my parents to call a therapist. You could call a therapist. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm very aware that I can come off weird, or like I'm hard to read, I guess. And, and I know that sometimes that makes people not want to be friends with me. Or maybe it's just I'm bad at making friends because I don't think I need them deep down. But I'm trying because I see how close you and Lavender are. And I just think that's really cool, and I wish I had a friendship like that, I guess. And Lavender's gone out of her way to be super nice to me, and she said that you haven't said anything bad about me to her, so I figured it'd be worth the shot. Well, I don't think I've ever met a boy that's doing a, all this. Well, now you have. <laughs> the Lake House thing makes more sense now. Avoid an attachment style, of course you'd want to be making your own money. And I'm out of the house more this way. Not that my parents are ever really there to begin with, but, you know, things are less empty when I'm here. How has Lavender gone out of her way to be nice? She didn't tell you? She invited me to visit her at work the other day. Was it on Thursday? Uh, Did she have a Subway sandwich? Yes, I think so. Uh, hmm. What? D that would explain some things. What do you mean? <sighs> Nothing. Oh, I'm so nervous. We have to get out of here. Uh, hello, we were supposed to leave 20 minutes ago? Oh, Jesus, what's with the drive? 
drama. I can be ready to go in two seconds. Lavender, my entire family is at the hospital and we're not there yet. What are you not understanding about the situation? This is a high stakes big fucking deal. We have to go. I want to change my shoes. Hold on. Oh my fucking god. She said a lot of stuff about you. Yeah? Yeah, lots of funny stuff. She really couldn't stop talking about you, actually. It's, it's really cool how close you two are. Why do you keep saying that? Maybe that's not the right way to put it, but you know. Oh, I'm so nervous. She deserves all the good things in this world. She's, God, she's such a gem and a star and... Guess what? You got the job. Uh -huh. Oh my God! I knew you would! I'm glad you appreciate it, I guess. You are welcome. spirit healing kick lately, and it just made me realize that I should be performing at this open mic thousand followers on Tumblr. <laughs> sure, she's cute, but um, she's going to have to make some choices if she's going to make the impression she wants. Like, this boy is going to be there. She really has to keep the bold choices going if we're going to keep his attention at all. This is a chance to really impress him, to show that there's more to her than her childhood and current existence in 2012 Wedgwood, Ohio. <laughs> okay, we're getting somewhere here. Makeup, what's happening? Okay, I see. I see. A minimalistic choice. Wow, what an idea. Surely not something I would have thought of. Maybe she's got something going on that's worthwhile after all. Hey, um, I'm Lavender. Um, I've been coming to these open mics for a long time now, and um, I just really loved watching people perform. And I just haven't, um, I hadn't had the courage to come up and perform at one myself, but um, I'm going to college in a couple weeks. Woo! Oh, woo! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, I just thought it, it's now or never. Um, so, yeah, um, I wrote this song 
like a million years ago, but it's still a bop. <laughs> so um, here it goes. I'm sorry if it's bad in advance. <laughs>
and Max um, for encouraging me to do this and for supporting me and stuff. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll do this again sometime. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Straight down the open road. You never cared to join me there, couldn't help but let it show. Cause you never had it all, and never were quite right. But nothing's quite so crystal clear in the silence of the night. Oh, are you thinking about me? Drinking and feeling start to fade. I know you hate to not relate, but it's just not in your blood. The streets you walk on ring when you call my name. The smoke just grew too thick, my love. Yeah, we never were the same. Oh.
fucking die, but I think it actually went pretty okay. Oh my god, I don't know how many times I have to tell you. People loved it, like they really loved it. I mean, it doesn't hurt that the same regularities have been the same for the past four years. Uh, true. If I have to hear that fedora couple sing one more time. Ew, oh my god, don't say that, because you're definitely probably going to have to hear them sing many, many, many more times. <laughs> Who says I'll be going to the library open mic night once you're gone? I guess no one. Why are you checking your phone so much? No reason. I just think it's really rude of Max to not show up. <laughs> I mean, I told him to come and he said that he would. And when did you say that? Didn't I that one day at the pool? No. You barely said anything. Anything of meaning. Oh. Um, I thought that I did. It's just, well, we, we bonded over the whole open mic thing and he just doesn't show up. Oh, maybe he got caught up like walking his dog or reading a book or chasing a storm. Oh my gosh, give him a chance. Oh, I know his deal. How do you know his deal? Well, we worked together. He was telling me all about his, like, quest for self-improvement shit the other day. He's not into you. Like, he's reading all these psych books trying to better himself? Like, I guess that's admirable. You are nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this place looks so weird with the stuff on the walls. Like, I don't think I've seen that patch of wall in years. Yeah, you probably haven't. Have you figured out which poster I'm getting yet? Which a scrap of something? No. No? Don't make fun of me. I, I, I'm not. It's gonna have to be a spur of the moment decision. I'm gonna have to go where the spirit takes me or whatever. I don't know. Well, do you know what you want to do on your last night in town? Mm. Uh, we could ride Shane's golf cart to Walmart for old time's sake. <laughs> I want to do something new. Oh, um, okay. Something new. Like what? Die? Oh my god! No! <laughs> I want you to come out on the roof with me. Are you serious? I have made it this far and now you're trying to get me to go out on your roof? Oh, I don't know why you won't try it. It's barely even on an incline. My cousin was severely injured after her roof fall. Okay, but she was drunk on the roof of a frat house. It, this will not be like that. Plus, I thought you were all about taking risks these days. First the open mic night, who knows what's next. I thought you were being brave. And I guess I'll try. It's really beautiful. And we can make it cute and like, you can bring a blunt or something if you want. Oh my god, what? <laughs> well, I mean, you're right, I haven't really broken any rules in my 17 years, and isn't it best to try this kind of thing with someone you trust or whatever? Wow, I can't believe this. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm not that boring. I'm just saying I never thought you would smoke weed, let alone with me. Well, why not with you? I'd basically try anything once if you were involved. <laughs> I guess that's true. Do you think Max likes you? No. Do you think he likes you? No. <laughs> Lavender. I hate caring this much. And for what? He, I just met him and he hardly even recognizes that I exist. It's just, God, how am I supposed to go off to college and just act like I have all of this experience? Am I just supposed to pretend that I do? Just have sex with whoever shows even the slightest bit of interest and just hope and pray that I am drunk enough or inebriated enough for it to not make a lasting impact on me. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. What? Are you, is that all you're gonna say? <clears throat> I don't know what you want me to say. I think you're totally fine. Don't you have like opinions on things? Like, you obviously do when it comes to Max. You do not want him around me. And if you don't want him around me, then who do you want around me? Or do you just want me to go into the unknown not knowing shit? You're attacking me right now and I did nothing wrong. I just wish that we could like talk about this kind of stuff. 
Darling, I know that you're ever so busy working on the next issue, but I really have something I need to talk with you about. It's really quite urgent. Please call me back when you can. We can dish then. So sorry to have missed you. Things have just been so crazy with all of the interview requests coming in and the legal actions being taken by Liza. Liza Minnelli. <laughs> Her people. It's overwhelming. I mean, it's dizzying, even. I guess this is the life we asked for, though, isn't it? I mean, people need us. People are demanding our attention and to take our picture. Ah. <laughs> oh, it's just the way it is. Anyway, I'm sure you're asleep by now, but I didn't want you thinking that I wasn't thinking about you. Call me when you can. Darlings, of course I heard the phone ring. <laughs> of course I was sitting idly by, waiting for her to call back, but then I remembered. I am a very busy woman. <laughs> when she called back, I could have been out at the bar, sipping on my third drink, being wooed by a trio of label executives in suits. <laughs> I could have been making love to my chiseled husband. or having realized that I truly am an independent woman capable of talking myself through crises, I could have been dreaming softly of diamonds and expensive trips and working with Meryl Streep. <laughs> and while none of those things were actively happening when she called back, I just wanted her to wonder. <laughs> You'd think the rain would stop them. You would. So this is standard? Yeah, sometimes it feels like the games only intensify in the rain. Unless, of course, there's lightning. Well, they are pretending to be water-type Pokemon. <laughs> uh, this job sucks. You really think so? Yeah, but they all do. Summer jobs are just like this. I don't know. Uh, I saw a couple of kids our, day, uh, our age working at Menchie's the other day, and that seems pretty sweet. Imagine all the free samples they get to steal. Very hardcore. <laughs> well, if you hate this job so much, why do you work here? Well, uh, want to know a secret? Um, of course. I am saving up to buy Lavender Beyonce tickets. <gasps> no way! Aren't those like a million dollars? I want to go so bad! But, uh... You don't want people to know you love her? Yeah. Although, in my opinion, you have to have, like, absolutely no taste to not love her. I mean, come on. Right. Well, it's kind of uh, Lavender my thing, loving Beyonce. I really want to take her for graduation. But you can't say anything. I, I've been having trouble keeping it a secret myself. Of course I won't say anything. Is she coming here today? <sighs> Who knows? She's been kind of a mess lately. She probably just freaked out about going to school. She is, but it's not just that. She's like desperate for something big to happen. I don't really know what she's expecting. Oh, well, it looks like she didn't forget the usual, even in the rain. Hello, 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 social delivery. 
Lavender, I am so sorry. I missed the open mic night last. Oh my god, it is totally fine. Don't you were that. you were amazing. I wasn't there because my car broke down and my brother had my bike, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to do that thing where you text the person two seconds before they go on saying, oh my god, I suck, I can't be there. But I had my friend Greg record it because he was there, and I got to see the song you did, and I thought it was so, so, so good. Oh my gosh, you really think so? Really? I think you're the real deal. I wish I was as good as you are. <laughs> you stop. play music? Yeah. Sort of. Sometimes. Uh, I have this new song I've been working on. You guys should come to the next open mic night. I really want both of you to hear it. Uh, yeah. We'll definitely be there. Are you down for that, Mia? Yeah. Sure. Nice. <laughs> but, before that, uh, would you guys want to hang out? Hang out? <laughs> like, all three of us? Yeah, we could play a game, or... I don't like video uh, games. Uh, that's not true, you love Wii Sports Resort. We could do that, I love playing the game. Or we could do an activity. What activity? Um, we could... My sister teaches one of those paint and sip classes at the church on Clydesdale. Oh my gosh, that is so fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not legal for them to serve alcohol there, but I think she just takes the communion wine and no one ever says it. <laughs> we can't even drink. Right, so that doesn't apply to us. Um, but we could bring some Snapples or LaCroix or something. And then we can get like food afterwards. Um, Mia, does that sound good to you? Uh, I don't know. She, she said her next class is a painting a sunrise in Bali. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> And then we could do some music stuff after, make it a whole thing. Yeah. I, I don't know about all that. Uh, we're definitely down. <laughs> Did you want to get out of the rain, or? Uh, are you trying to get rid of me or something? Uh, no. Uh, it's warm rain, is it not? Oh. <laughs> We're being paid to stand out here. We're not. I'm having fun. <laughs> me too. All right. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. I'm gonna go inside. I'll meet up with you guys later. Bye. Bye. Wallpaper. Max is the most attainable yet still satisfying goal I can focus in on. <laughs> Max was nothing but a symbol of the beginning of the end, a sign that soon female friendship and all of the uncontainable magic that comes along with it would take a back seat to men. Compromising, justifying, telling yourself that it's worth it, not moving to new cities and new jobs when you really should just because of a man. Max was everything. Max was the beginning of the great long game, the inspiration behind all my thirsty love songs, at least in the beginning. The relationship that cemented one concrete truth in my heart and mind. In hetero relations, the woman has to have the upper hand. She has to be a vixen. She has to be Carmen San Diego. <laughs> she has to know exactly what she wants. Because if she doesn't, she'll most likely be scammed. Why do you want our attention so badly? Why do you need Mia's attention too? Do you ever think about this like 15 years into the future? <laughs> do you even know what a contralto is? 
she leaves, are you going to stop talking to me? Once I leave, you're going to fall in love with my best friend? Are your parents still giving you money? What? Are you still playing Super Smash Brothers? Do you What's your man's playing something to me? Is it your talk about the Do you have any legends? Do you have anything you'd like to share? I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> Hanging in there? Yeah. Yeah, I know. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> We're not going to explain it to you either. I hope you've been taking in all this stuff on the walls, because as I'm sure you're aware, nothing is here on accident. This is all heavily curated. And there's one legend here that we haven't even really talked about yet, which is surprising considering she's pretty foundational, especially for 2012. In the world of wholesome, talented, and unproblematic songstresses, you'd be in for a challenge to find anyone more appropriate than Adele. <laughs> if you're doubting my use of the word legend, please, allow me to make my case. Whether you love or hate her songs, both reasonable responses, you know you can't avoid them. It is a fact that Adele is one of the world's most pleasant media presences. In addition to her ruthless advocacy for the black gown, red lip, wing liner, classic combination, she is what we all hope to be. Talented, genuine, and beloved. She's all class, all humility, and Especially for Lavender, she's very just quietly getting Starbucks after school, like a chill, cool girl. And uh, studying for AP Lang with like a low flame of disdain in the pit of your stomach, resenting the everyday drudgery of high school and imagining instead that you're at a ski lot. Drinking hot chocolate and laughing classily with a nice man. <laughs> With Max, Adele would be chill and accessible and relatable. <laughs> Adele would just be down to have a good time. And if something else happened to arise, something romantic, <laughs> she'd enjoy it, take it for all it's worth, then turn it into mass-produced content for all to hear at bad high school talent shows. <laughs> Adele would be calm and herself. She knows it's all doomed anyway, so why not just roll with it? <laughs> Let's see if little Lavender takes the note. Listen to this shit. It's so good. <laughs> How 
do you work up the courage to just mercilessly rip hairs out of your face? <laughs> it took me a while to get used to it, but since I've started, it's been great. And your eyebrows are kind of fucked, so... It's really <laughs> I'm getting clammy. You're annoying me. Lay on the bed. What? what? Give me the tweezers. Lay on the bed. Okay. <laughs> Right if I touch you. Here's tweezing his eyebrows at me. It doesn't need to be vetted for consent. Well, excuse me for being considerate. It's fine. It's it's fine. Do you want to squeeze my hand? Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> Intentionally Twilight themed, or? Um, I don't think it was licensed for it, but it was made in 2008. So basically. It <laughs> smells like something. Yeah, that one's really not my first string, but this one. This one is the best. Winter Candy Apple. <laughs> a classic. Oh. Winter Candy Apple is like the smell of a pretty older cousin whose nails are always together. And like, showering. <laughs> what about this orange one? Is this glittery? Duh. <laughs> Peachy. Mm -hmm. Um, are you singing my song? Yeah, dude, it rocks. How do you know how it goes? I've been listening to that video Greg sent me like every day. Wow, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Who's it about? Well, it's funny that you ask, because I never told her for obvious reasons. But um, now that somebody has worked up the nerve to ask me such a bold and personal and imperative question, I'm going to answer it. It's about Mia, duh. Who's it about? Well, it's funny that you ask, because I wrote this song a long time ago, and I have just been waiting for the true source of art, of inspiration, to appear in the actual realities of my life, and it is definitely about you. Who's it about? Um, I just modeled it after stuff that I liked. <laughs> and, um, it was also inappropriately into Les Mis at the time, so I was probably unconsciously tapping into some eponine energy. Interesting. Yeah. What do you guys want to do now? Well, I gotta head out pretty soon. I gotta feed Velvet. Well, we didn't even get to show you the chair dance yet. Chair dance? Yeah. Lavender, I'm not doing the chair dance. Why? You're so good at it. <clears throat> Lavender made us learn the chair dance from Beyonce's dance for you. It is very impressive. <laughs> That's okay. You'll just have to save it for next time. Okay, sure. That's fine. So there will be a next time. Um, yeah, of course. Cool. Sweet. Great. Uh, Your eyebrows look way better, by the way. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, okay. 
Okay. But bye. Bye. <laughs> particularly compelled by this boy. I find him to be, in general, uh, just barely scraping by in terms of personality. <laughs> like, I don't want to watch a coming-of-age movie about him or anything, but for some reason I don't find him outright horrible to be around. He feels well, kind of like a pet. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or a little brother. I, he's just very tolerable. Mm -hmm. um, in my expert opinion, it just seems like there's no way Lavender could realistically think that he likes her. Like he might not even like girls at all, period. <laughs> okay, come on, you know what I'm talking about. Come on. <laughs> it was it's, okay. it's the, the, the one, um, you know. Exactly. Read this. <laughs> Bitch! A kind of age would be about me would be iconic. Don't even try to tell me I'm wrong. I would never even dare. How is the disco? Uh, kind of just fine. Like, did I live? No. Did I die? No. But there were some okay looking people there and the music was passable. You should have seen this one. He is fully understating his impact on the vibe of the place. Well, there's no need to brag when it's simply the norm. <laughs> Where did you even get that, Mia? My mom mailed it to me all the way from Ohio. Can you believe? Like, <laughs> Well, read me the next entry. Geez, boundaries, please. What's the past is past. Who needs to get caught up in all this stuff anyway? It's, it's just for fun. Mia, you missed a great night to read an old journal. Why don't you live a little? Come on. Come on. We're going out again. Go on. Come on. Go on. Go, go, go. Okay. <laughs> Seth scream, uh, study hall! It's the beginning of choir every day for another four quarters. Uh, okay, but that's the highlight of choir. <laughs> uh, it's just not gonna be the same without you around. Are you going to tell her? I'm gonna be disappointed if you're a sad sack all year, especially now that you have Max. Well, I won't be a sad sack when I come visit you. Yeah, but there's more to your senior year than just coming to visit me, even though of course, you are more than welcome to. <laughs> Weren't you the one who was like begging me to commit to a visit for fall break like a month ago? I know. I just been really thinking about what it's gonna be like to be separated for basically the first time ever and how much we're actually gonna be able to see each other. Well, um, can't it just be like as much as we want it to be? Yeah, um, but I'm thinking 
that maybe the separation could be good for us. Um, like maybe, you know, uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Um, even though I can't feel more fondly for you. Are you going to tell her? Um, oh shit. Hey, uh, can you drive me to an appointment that I have like 15 minutes away over by the freeway? Oh. What is it? Uh, it's a personal subject. So personal you can't tell me? Okay, if I tell you, you can't be mad. I, I promise I won't be mad. Okay. Um, I'm getting an IUD. Let's go. <laughs> uh, you you are? Yeah, it's a it's a copper one. <laughs> Holy fuck! Is this supposed to be like ultra painful? Yeah, you like literally shove it into your cervix and into the unknown. <laughs> cramps like way worse anyway? Yeah, but they, they last like 10 years, so you don't even have to worry about it. I guess that's convenient. Yeah, and then you don't have to do the whole like, do you have a condom song and dance? You can just do it. Don't sit down. <laughs> Are you really calling a simple question a song and dance? <sighs> okay. Let's say I do rush. And I'm at a frat house, and there's this guy that I like want to hook up with. <laughs> um, imagine having to be like... <laughs> Do you have a condom? <laughs> no. Even if you have an IUD, he could still have herpes or something. Oh, um, college kids don't have herpes. <laughs> possibly be worth that risk. There's a civil suit going on right now of people trying to sue the makers of Paragard for making their IUDs so faulty that, that they fall apart in the uterus. Yeah, And you're stuck with plastic floating around inside you like indefinitely. I'm worried for her. Uh, I don't know if she should have one. Do you still have your IUD? <laughs> well, I'm just reading, or I'm just remembering that, that you had one back in the day. Did you ever get it taken out? Okay, well, why not? <laughs> no, but it's not the hormonal one, it's the copper one. I have it written down. No, I'm just, I'm just saying it doesn't seem like something you need anymore because... Okay, okay no, I'm not going to do that. You can do what you want. I just... Okay. I'm sorry I brought it up. I'm just surprised. I love you too. I'm sorry again. But. Okay, give me, give me three tries. All right, three all right. Three tries. Fine. <laughs> all right, all right? Yeah. Oh. Not I. Well, I'm over here. Well, pick it up! <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, come on. All right, one let's more, try, one more, one more. let's try. Ready? Oh, shit. Ah. All right, pick it up. Oh. All right, one more. Oh. Never again. Oh. 
It doesn't matter if it's against the rules, Grayson. We make the rules. Yeah, we make the rules. Shut up. <laughs> hey, where's Lavender? I want a Frosty. Oh, wow. Uh, she's at home theatrically recovering from her doctor's appointment. Oh? Did she get a shot or something? Sort of. Um, <laughs> it's private. Hmm. She got an okay. IUD. <laughs> an intrauterine device? It's birth control, like really hardcore birth control. Jesus, it sounds like it. <laughs> Is she in pain? Yeah, she said she's cramping. Well, I'm surprised you're here if she's at home ailing. Well, she has her mom. She can take care of her. I know, but we're dead. You could just leave and no one would know. Well, she says we need to prepare for separation, so I thought it would just make sense to give her her space. And then she asked me to drive her to the appointment. Not that it's my business, but um, she wants space, but she also wants you to drive her to the appointment? Excuse you. I'm just pointing it out. I'm just saying that's kind of rude. Our relationship is not characterized by its healthy boundaries, I will say that. Hmm. What? I'm just surprised you told me she got an IUD. Like, I'm glad to be included, I guess, but... I'm like 100% sure she's gonna talk about it in front of you next time we're all together. She's like, proud of it. Do you guys normally talk about that kind of stuff? What, our vaginas? No! <laughs> like, personal stuff. Well, we're girls, so kinda, what's your point? I'm just asking a simple question. You're creeping me out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, if you're asking, like, what do we talk about when it's just the two of us? It's normally, like, petty work shit, your boys, or music stuff. It wasn't always that way. It's just lately it's been particularly narrow. Well, I hope you two stay friends. That makes two of us. Hey, do you play sports? Because I'm in a, a kickball league, an intramural one. One for private school kids? Yeah, but we're always looking for new people, and maybe in the fall you could join us. Maybe. I think you'd like it. Why do you like me? What? Like, it actually seems like you really like me. Why? Uh... Do you want me to just compliment you, or...? No. You don't have a crush on me, right? Oh. No. No. I, I mean, no offense. I am not offended. Okay, good. And sometimes guys are into the whole mean thing, or whatever. What? Alleged. I, I don't know. Um, just, glad you're not in love with me or anything. Yeah, I, I just like you as a friend. Thank God. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I joined the kickball league. that they would actually say, but maybe there would be a, an ambiance, a vibe, just in case there isn't already enough of a vibe. <laughs>
What if I never find this again? What if, what if I, I never, never find, find this, this again? again? What if I never find this again? She's driving to Lavender's house the same way that she's done every day since she could drive. She turns up the music in her car and she can't help but wonder if things will ever feel this way again. It's a huge pain right now. But she can't know what life will be like in a few years. Once she gets the cats, and the girlfriend, and the nice apartment, will the stakes ever be as high? high? And if they're not, will I miss that? She's wondering what I would say, but I can't tell her. I wish that I could. tomorrow. She is beautiful and she is leaving tomorrow. And she's primping because she wants me to remember her as beautiful and glamorous and perfect. Even though she is obviously all of these things. Even when she's being annoying as shit. <laughs> Hi. Hi. You look pretty. I know. <laughs> so are you ready to go? Uh, yeah, let me just grab my uh, purse really fast. Okay. Uh, do you know what time it starts? What starts? The show. I don't want to be like late late, but a good 10 minutes would be good. The show? Yeah, Max's show. It's tonight, remember? Oh, uh, I didn't know that. 
Yes, you do know that. Uh, we talked about it with Max. You said that you'd be down. We talked about it last week. I guess I just didn't realize it was tonight tonight. Well, it is. So, so, really want to go? Of course I want to go, don't you? Yeah, but do you really want to go on your last night before you leave? Oh my God, God, you act like I'm dying. I'm not dying. I'm just going off to college. Uh, you're the one who said we should prepare for separation. Uh, haven't you been like looking forward to the plays that we made? The roof and all that? Yeah. Like, don't you have a blunt ready? Aren't you ready to go out and face your fears? Honestly, Mia, I've been a little distracted. Distracted? Well, why didn't you say anything earlier when we were texting, making plans to hang out? Because I knew you were gonna freak out like this. I'm not freaking out. I just don't understand why you're acting like this. Like what? All shady and detached. You haven't even left yet, and you're cutting me out. If you don't want to go on the show, that's fine. I can meet up with you later. Meet up with me later? Yeah, we can go to the roof later. We will have time. I know that you don't care about Max, but I do. Which, by the way, doesn't even make sense. Because we all know that he is just waiting for me to leave so that he can make a move on you. Lavender, I straight up asked him if he liked me and he said no. I don't know what else needs to happen for you to realize he does not like me. When did you ask him that? It, yesterday. Why didn't you tell me that? Because he doesn't like you either. Uh, oh, okay, you know, don't lash out on me just because that you're jealous that somebody else is interested in me, that I want a relationship with somebody other than you. Well, it doesn't matter. If you're the only one who wants the relationship, trust me. What does that even mean? All I'm saying is that if you wanted to be your boyfriend, or date you, or like anonymously fuck you and then ride off into the sunset like one of those stupid Lana videos you've been brainwashing yourself with, he would have done it by now. Okay. Uh, Mia, I have tried to understand you, to get why you won't talk about anything emotional or personal or even interesting, to get why you're so closed off. Do you know what it was like to be me just constantly pouring out my shit to you and you just ning and yesing like a therapist? Well, that's all I can do because you hardly leave any room for anyone to get a word in edgewise. Why do you think you don't have any real friends other than me? Oh, you know how hard it is when you are constantly just hanging around and killing the vibe. Do you know how shocking it is to me that Max wasn't totally scared off by you acting like a total bitch to him all the time? Do you just not want me to be happy? How? How could this random boy possibly make you happier than I can? You know why, Mia? No, I don't. I Apparently, I'm totally clueless. No, you are not clueless. You are controlling, and you're jealous, and you don't want me to have other friends because if you're left alone, then who the fuck will you have left? I like you. I love you. And like, we say it to each other a million times a day, but while you might not mean it, mean it, I mean it. And I know you know that I've meant it, but Oh God, how difficult it must be for you to face something so difficult. The agony unfurling at the idea of losing me, of losing this. Have you ever thought that that just means that you love me too? But I know that you're gonna walk out that door tomorrow, all this stuff is gonna be down off the walls and you're gonna go out into the world and people are gonna see you the way I see you. And they're gonna ask things of you and you're gonna do them, and you'll never treat me the same again. Uh, it'll be, oh, Mia, let me explain this to you. Let me show you this way to touch a penis or straighten your hair, but I don't want that. I don't want things to change. I don't want you to go. Because if you're left alone, then who the fuck will you have left? I. I don't know, but um, clearly you're sick of me and this, so. I am sorry and I love you, but I have to do this, okay?
Now, in Lavender's mind, there are a few different ways that this all could go. Oh my god, thanks so much for coming to the show. Oh my gosh, you are so welcome. Seeing you here in this beautiful magic hour glow makes me realize yes. I have wanted to have sex with you this whole time. <laughs> How could I have not seen it till now? How could I have been such a fool? Forgive me for my ignorance, you magnificent rose of a woman. That's the best case scenario. Unrealistic at best. It might go a little more like... Oh my god, thanks so much for coming to the show. Oh my gosh, don't thank me. It was so good. <laughs> Do you want to go get ice cream? Uh, we can get high first. Oh, you read my mind. <laughs> and then that would lead to some sort of hand-holding, some sort of embracing, maybe. And then maybe one thing would lead to another, and something truly exciting might happen. Though it is hard to envision, the plan here is to stay calm, stay cool and collected. No one wants to make out with someone who's hyperventilating. <laughs> and you really made some choices back there with your best friend. So you better make it all worth it, and you better prove her wrong. <laughs> hey, everyone. Um, thanks for coming out tonight. Um, I have a new song to play for you. Well, we do, but I wrote it. Um, I normally don't give context for what my songs are about, but um, this summer I made two really cool new friends, and this one's for them. And they're here, I think, or at least they're supposed to be. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, this one's for them. Once in my life, I had nobody there for me. I thought that's the way life would be. Now that you're here, I can see that you care for me. Now I know. That's the way it's meant to be. Do, 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 do. <laughs> That's the way it's meant to be. Do, 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 do. That's the way it's meant to be. Please, please just 
Play it cool. Don't make me kick your ass. <laughs> oh. Hi. Lavender, it's so good hey. to see you. Hi. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of surprised to see you, though. I didn't think I saw you in the crowd when I was playing. Oh, no, no, I, I was totally there. Are you is, me? is Mia here? Ugh. Um, no. No, she got caught up and she couldn't make it. Oh. Yeah, she didn't want to come. Uh, yeah, she was weirdly vehement about it. Really? Mm-hmm. That doesn't make a lot of sense. I know, but, you know, a uh, grouch is a grouch, right? <laughs> I guess. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for coming, guys. <clears throat> Aren't you leaving for school tomorrow? Yeah. Are you packed and everything? Uh, basically. <clears throat> you done everything you want to do before you... You leave this place and never come back? Tick tock. Uh, <laughs> almost. Do you feel ready to go, though? I mean, I'm jealous. Yeah, um, I'm nervous, though. Why? You're the most outgoing. You'll make friends in a second. Um, it's not that. Then what is it? Don't say it. Um, I'm just nervous about, um, parties with, um, so... Mm -hmm. I will kick your ass! <laughs> um... <clears throat> I know that the only reason why you wanted me here was so that your friends could see me. You, you wanted your friends to see that this really this hot girl came to see you play. Uh... Um... Okay, I know, I know that you like Mia more than me, and I know that there's nothing I can do to change that because I'm, uh, like this, but I'm confident, and, um, I know that you don't have a lot of options, but I'm, um, I'm a good one, and, um, I think that you know that deep, deep down, and, um, basically I just wanted to say that I think that you're really nice, and I think that you're cute, and, um, yeah. Uh, I know that you like me. You don't even have to tell me that you do. I, I just, I know that you do. <laughs> um, I don't know why I said all that stuff about Mia. Um, I don't, I don't know, really. Lavender. Um, am I making uh, any sense? Now I see why Mia isn't here. What? Just feel like she probably didn't. Why are you so obsessed with her? I just feel like you should be hanging out with her tonight. Uh, uh, what? I'm sorry. No. Uh, y you're no. so cool and, 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 and funny and pretty. Then what's the fucking problem? Oh my god. Uh, uh, <laughs> I think we should go back in there. There's some people in there I want you to meet, okay? Really? Yes, because they do music stuff too, and I think that you'd like them. What did you think of the song, by the way? Which one? The one, the what? You know which one. Oh, um. I gotta go back in there, but, um, I would love to hear your thoughts, if you have them. Um, I'm 
sure you're ignoring me? Um, I would ignore me too, um, but, uh, I love you, and, um, I will wait for you to call me before I try to come over or anything. Um, okay. You know, I feel so lucky to be here. Um, and sometimes I wonder if I really deserve any of it. If I made the right choices in getting here, and if, if fame is really all it's cracked up to be. And maybe I lost some friends along the way, and maybe I'm not better off without them. But, but I know that I feel so good when I get to perform for all of you. But I guess, I guess it's lonely at the top. At least that's, that's what they say. last day of the season. You too. So how are you? Fine. Why? I just figured with lavender fully sucked into packing, it'd probably be pretty weird for you. Honestly, I kind of feel the same as I always have. Why didn't you come to the show last night? I wasn't feeling well. I was kind of surprised to see her there without you. Well, she didn't want to hang around and be bored, I guess. So, did you kiss her or anything with her? No, I didn't. She tried. I was surprised. Um. <laughs> you know she's like, kind of obsessed with you, right? Uh, no. You can't be serious. I just thought that we were friends. Or, I think that we we're friends. No, no, past tense is correct. I'm sure when she comes back to lowly Wedgwood, she will pretend she doesn't know you, especially since you didn't like like her. I think we can believe in her a bit more than that. So, why didn't you? 
It didn't feel right. How though? Why? I don't know. Uh, lavender's really cool. I just didn't want to. Mm. And I didn't want you to feel excluded or, or like all our interactions were something that they weren't. But mostly I just didn't really want to kiss her. And imagining how bad or like weird that would have made you feel made it even worse. Anyway, how did she react to those Beyonce tickets? I didn't give them to her. What? Why? Um, I thought of someone else I want to bring. Well, who's that? Me? Yes! <laughs> why? Because you're a good friend. You deserve to celebrate your love for Beyonce, too. And it's the least I can do for not making it to your show. I, I am really sorry about that. Thanks. That's really cool of you. Well, uh, you're really cool, so uh, <laughs> deserve it. <laughs> uh, aren't you supposed to be watching the desk? Yes. Yes, I am. I will go do that. <clears throat> Stop reading that thing. It's like suffocating how nostalgic you are. You know that, right? You know that I'm leaving. No matter how much joy and comfort and relief you get from poring over those pages. You know, you really had a chance to make things better and you didn't take it. And I am tired of waiting for things to change. So here we are. You're not even going to look at me? How are you? Um, I'm fine. How are you? I'm okay. Um, I went to Dillard's this morning on my last shift. Uh, good riddance. Yeah. So, your night wasn't so good. No. Um, but I'm, I'm over it. Uh, the whole Max thing was fucking pointless, like you said. I don't think I said it was pointless. Well, I should have known that you were telling the truth. That you weren't lying to me when you said that Max didn't like me. I mean, why would you lie about something like that? I should have stayed with you. And we should have got out on your beautiful, sparkly roof and taken in the scenery on my last night in Wedgwood, like I promised you all along. And um, you are a really good friend. And you always have been. Um, I know this kind of like lovey stuff makes you uncomfortable, but um, that's how I feel. And it feels important to have told you. Um, and I just hope that you're not mad at me. And I just hope that you don't think that I like ditched you for a, a boy. Well, 
Didn't you? Well, I tried to hang out with you after the whole Max thing didn't go the way that I wanted, but you weren't answering me. And I mean, I also didn't want to waste my last night at home either. Um, the only reason I hung out with Max and his friends was because you were you were ignoring me, and that was that was really sad to me. Mm. Sad to me too. You better tell her what happened. And then I ended up doing something a bit extreme. I feel like that's not how we thought we'd describe it. <laughs> <laughs> Which was um, okay. So I just I just couldn't believe. And after all this time of wishing and wanting to just be with somebody, um, and it was about to not happen. So I um, asked this guy at the show to come back to my car with me, and um, I gave him a blowjob in my car. Tell her it was incredible, what are you doing? And it was so bad and weird, and um, he was wearing Slides with socks. Oh. <laughs> I, I gave a blowjob to a guy wearing slides with socks. And um, I'm not feeling victimized by my choice um, because at least it's, it's over with. Um, but it was not worth leaving you. And it was so not worth making this entire fucking summer weird, and um, it just made me realize that I don't know shit except for the fact that you have always been there for me, and that um, I never wanted to, I never felt right to say this, but um, I like you, and I never wanted to acknowledge it because bisexuality is for true sluts only, and how, how could I like you? and my boys too. Um, but it feels important to have said it before I go, because I know that you've been waiting and wondering, and I'm sorry, I was just so scared. I... And um, you're the only one who will tell me when I'm being psycho. <laughs> and um, you're the only one who will grab me by my shoulders and tell me when I'm being unhinged. <laughs> and I don't know what I'm going to do without that. Like, I'm fucking terrified. Um, and I should have listened to you this summer, but I know that you would have told me not to hook up with this guy, and I just thought it was so fucking important. Um, but you would have been right. And now I can't change that. And I'm sorry that I did that. Um, uh, what can I do to make it up to you? Nothing. I am nothing. I I'm sorry. OK. Um, well, I found the piece in my room I wanted to give you. Um, well, Pieces. Yeah. There's some good shit in here. <laughs> oh my god, is that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the first one ever. Wow. Can you read it out loud? Uh, I wonder, I, I don't think. I'll go first. I'll be you. <laughs> Dear Lavender, I am so bored in French class that I want to cry. After watching that fight break out at lunch, it's hard to feel excitement for anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Except, I wanted to tell you that I'm so excited for this weekend, and I can't believe we're finally going to be more than just school friends. I was thinking that we can get my mom to take us to Mitchell's and to the Red Box outside the grocery store. <laughs> and we can get some movies to watch and some snacks too. 
the perfect sleepover is incomplete without snacks. Right back on the back of his paper. Love, Mia. OMG, I am so loving this whole no writing thing. Uh, my cousins have this whole box set of old, old Mary Kate and Ashley movies, and they're always passing notes on them. BCW, I hate that my handwriting looks like every other girl's handwriting. Yours looks so cool. <laughs> I would love to get movies and snacks. We should watch Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. <laughs> you no, know, it sounds weird, but like when I showed it to my cousin, a different cousin, uh, she cried when she first saw the Phantom. It was amazing. <laughs> P.S. I am also really excited. We are going to be real friends and not just school friends. I think you are very cool. <laughs> I'm sorry for everything, Mia. Do you forgive me? Okay. Um, well, my parents are pretty much ready to go, so um, I should go. Yeah. Probably should. I'm really gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you too. But you'll come visit me, right? Yeah, sure, of course. Okay. Um, I'll save you a, a natty ice or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you too. And um, uh, maybe when I come home, we can hang out at the library, or um, maybe we can come here and just be together, and it'll be like nothing ever happened. If you want it to be true, badly enough, you can make yourself believe anything. Yeah, maybe. Okay. I don't know why I thought we would never change. I don't know why I thought I was owed anything. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that with Lavender, it was ever about me. Even as we sat there on her bed and I could feel my heart crumple up into this tiny little ball of tissue paper, I could still feel myself looking at her in that same way I always have. Soft focus, shimmering tinsel, so much grace, so much forgiveness, so much self-preservation. Knowing that I will be thinking about this moment and writing about this moment and aching over this moment and trying to remember what she even said and how she said it, and debating whether or not in the end it even mattered at all. Was her song, you know, the song? Is it about me? I think you know the answer.
Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you.